The true discovery of scripture is to discover one person. That's why John calls him the word. These Old Testament prophets were actually saying or speaking about a man. All they said was the prophecy of a man. Jesus said to them, didn't the prophet say that the Christ will die and suffer three days and be raised again the third day? They said yes. That means that the message of the Old Testament is a man. It's not the message of God. It's the message of a man. The message of God who became a man. So it's the message of a man like God. A man like God, a man like God, or God who became a man. This God is God who became a man. So he is a man like, man like, he is man like. He is not a man that is God like. He is not a man that is God like. He is God that is man like. Are you following? Please don't miss here. If you miss here, you have missed the entire Bible. He is not a man that is like God. He is a God that is man-like. Hence, the word was with God. With points to God. So, this message is not man being like God. It is God who is man-like. The message of the scriptures is the message of God who is man-like. Man-like God. So when he stepped into the realm of man, we saw God as a man. It's not man that became God. We saw God as a man. So we have a man-like God. What we have is God who is a man god's only revelation that is the only place you will ever know god in all of his vast creation is in a man all the message that is the word points to god so the message of god the voice of god is a man the message of God, the voice of God is a man. When we say a man, we are going to see how a man he is. So we have a man like God. That means God is like man. Look at Genesis 1, 26, 28. Let us make man in our image. And I have taught you before because of time that the image and likeness of God is Christ. So on the streets of man in the four gospels for 33 years, who was in the earth? A man like God. I didn't say a man who is like God. I said a man like God is God who became a man. A man like God was on the earth. A man of God says the four gospels was a photograph. No details. Eyewitness. A photograph. No details. However, interestingly, you can only know him in him. You can only know him in him. John now says the word became what? The word became the message. It became the reason. It became flesh. So the message and the reason is a man. What's the word became? Is the word genomai in the Greek. The word was made flesh. Genomai. So we have a man like God. That is God is man like. He is God that became a man. So to know whether he is a man, let's find out Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like us, like us without sin. As we are, it's not in the original. When he says he was at all point tempted, you cannot sin if you are not tempted. You cannot sin if you are not tempted. And you cannot be tempted if you are not a man. You cannot sin if you are not tempted. And you cannot be tempted if you are not a man. You need to have a physical body to be a man. You need to have a physical body to sin. So, when he says he was tempted at all points without sin, that word like, like, he was tempted like, that word like was used in Hebrews 7.15. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. Similitude, when he says like, he's referring to semblance. We are the same. So he's telling us here that just like Melchizedek was, the word like in the Greek is the word homoitis. It means semblance. 
in that case melchizedek was to foreshadow the priesthood of christ so what we have in man will be a shadow of christ man is a shadow of christ and you cannot foreshadow what does not exist there can only be a shadow after there was an object a shadow does not appear on its own there must be a substance somewhere that brings out a shadow so if man was to foreshadow christ so genesis 1 26 will be christ genesis 2 7 will be the shadow genesis 1 god created man in his image genesis 2 god formed man the shadow of man created because Melchizedek foreshadowing Christ will mean that Christ pre-existed before Melchizedek. Because you can't foreshadow what is not real. Are we teaching? If you see a shadow somewhere and you don't see an object, what is that shadow telling you? That if you look well, somewhere there, that object that brought that shadow is existing. So when we say the Old Testament is a shadow of the new, what we mean is that the new existed before the Old Testament could shadow it. Am I communicating? So in Melchizedek, we see a foreshadowing. So what we have in man will be a shadow of Christ. Adam was a shadow of Christ. So a man like God or God who is like man. So far, for Jesus to be tempted, he must have been in the same status like Adam. That is, Jesus was neither mortal nor immortal. He was neither subject to death or above death. He was neither of them. Because that's exactly how Adam's body was. Adam was neither mortal nor immortal pending when he makes a choice. If Adam had made the choice for Christ, he would have lived forever. So within that body was the capacity to be both mortal and immortal pending on the choice. So when Adam now made the choice for death, his body started succumbing and learning how to die. So for you to be tempted, you have to be a man. You cannot be tempted if you're not a man. Remember, Jesus was tempted at all points without sin. Now, let's look at the points. James 1.13 Let no man say, when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Next verse. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The word drawn away of his own desire is instructive. Drawn away of his own desire. So, you have to have a desire to be tempted. But the fact that you have a desire does not result in sin automatically. But every man has desire. If you don't have desires, you are not a man. So what leads to sin? Verse 15. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So what brings forth sin? Conception of lust. When lust has conceived. That means the desire is man-like. So Jesus had desires. Let me ask you, was Jesus a man? So Jesus had desires. Yes? But he was not drawn to the point of conceiving sin. But he had desires. That means Jesus had sinful thoughts. Eh? Yes, he did. He has a desire as a man, except he's not a man. If you say Jesus didn't have sinful thoughts, you cancel him from being a man. But even though he had sinful thoughts, he didn't conceive them. Because it is when it is conceived that it will now produce sin. So desire on its own is not a sin. And human beings, what makes you human is that you have so jesus because we're examining the christ here so jesus had desires he had sinful thoughts that means he was tempted was he tempted if you are the son of man command these stones that they be made bread what is that you know why it is a genuine temptation because he was hungry so a man that is hungry what will be his desire exactly is it a sin to eat food no why was it a sin? Because of the person that was asking him to turn the stone to bread to prove a point. And he said, I know I'm hungry and I know I want bread, but man shall not live by bread alone. I'm not going to do it. So he overcame the temptation. Okay. So Jesus had sinful thoughts. Now, does temptation include human desire? Huh? 
So we have a man like God. Was he tempted? First Corinthians 10 30. There are no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, and will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it again. What is the message of the prophets? A man. Their prophecies was that a man was coming. God was coming as a man. Now, so no temptation has taken you but such as is common to man. The Greek word anthropoinos is used for anything not divine. Something that belongs to man. So temptation belongs to man. Temptation, God cannot be tempted. So once somebody is tempted, he's a man. So the moment Jesus was tempted, it was further proof that Jesus was a complete man. Jesus was a complete man. So we have a man like God, a man like God by the name of Christ. So all the prophets has been speaking about a God that will be a man. So God, like man, has to be tempted like man. God like man has to be tempted like man. How is man tempted? Desire. What's the desire? Let me ask all of you another question. Look at me everybody. Did Jesus have the capacity to sin? Huh? How, why did you answer that one very fast? <laughs> so Christ is a man like God. A man like God. That's what Christ is. A man. Full man. So what's the message of the prophets? A man. The word. The message. That is all the prophets were saying is that we will see a man like God. So while all the universe were looking outside the earth for God, God was pointing attention to man. We will see God clearly as a man. Because God's only revelation, God's only revelation is in a man. Notice, the angels desire to look into man. So Paul said that the church which comprises men will teach principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. So men are the university of angels. Angels come to us to learn. Because the revelation of God is in a man. Jesus had his own body. He rendered his body to death. And when he rose from the dead, he was glorified. Was there a difference between the body of Jesus before he died and the body of Jesus after he rose? Huh? Are you sure? Okay. Before he died, did he eat? After he rose, did he eat? Before he died, did he sleep? After he rose, did he sleep? Before he died, did he go to toilet? After he rose, did he go to toilet? So was there a difference? Why are all of you looking at me like that? Don't be in shock. We are studying the Bible. Where, was there a difference between the body of Jesus before he died and the body of Jesus after he rose? Eh? Did you say no or yes? Okay, just write it down. <laughs> there was no difference. Are you sure? <laughs> there was a difference between jesus before and jesus after resurrection now jesus after resurrection is it the same with jesus now eh? jesus after resurrection is it the same with jesus now eh? after resurrection did jesus go to toilet jesus now does he go to toilet <laughs> Is Bible study, Abby. In Bible study, you ask all manner of questions. We will find out. We will study together and get there. Luke 24, 36. And as they, they do speak, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Next verse, 37. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Next verse. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Next verse. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. 
he was proving to them that he had structure he had bones and he had support so he could move like anybody he could shake hands and he could hang the hands and they don't turn to oil he was the same and when they touched him they saw that this is the same body we touched before but we saw when he died so of a truth he rose it's not another person that has come to us to do boju boju this is the real guy glory to god i say glory to god somebody shout hallelujah i said somebody shout hallelujah so let me ask you this last question <laughs> was his body physical it was physical today is jesus's body physical huh? after resurrection was his body physical today is his body still physical <laughs> is bible study <laughs> wait 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 was his body physical after resurrection yes. did they hold him did they touch him yes. did they feel him yes. today is his body still physical yes. Eh? Yes. are you saying yes or no are you just saying eh, eh. <laughs> stand up let's close <laughs> glory yes. glory somebody shout i'm growing in grace I'm growing in knowledge. You see, all these questions I'm raising, we will answer them. We will answer them because the Bible has answers to all of them. All of them. Now, let me ask you a very simple question. When he rose from the dead, okay, they were in a room without a window and door. Did he enter the room? Was his body still physical? How did he enter a room without a door and a window? He appeared and disappeared. Can you appear and disappear? Do you have a physical body? Did Jesus have a physical body? Why can't you appear and disappear? <laughs> glory to God! Somebody shout glory! Amen!